What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and with week one now behind us, it's time to talk through my top 10 must-add waiver wire targets for week two of the fantasy football season. All of these guys are under 50% owned in ESPN leagues. We're going to get straight to it. Leave a like if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new. And our first player here is Jordan Mason. I do want to say, a lot of YouTube channels out here, it's a race to be the first one to drop a waiver wire video. They drop it on Monday, whatever. Well, fellas, waivers don't clear until, what, 3 a.m. tonight? You don't got to set your waivers on Monday. I know that we're all we're fiending for the content. I know that there's a time and place for it, but things change, right? We get news on Monday night that is really valuable, and I want to make sure that I'm helping you guys as much as possible, and I just think that it would hurt you guys if I gave you a waiver wire video yesterday before we get news like Christian McCaffrey is inactive for Monday night. I bet you the most important waiver wire ad of the week probably isn't mentioned in most of these waiver wire videos that you see on YouTube. So we are here. Jordan Mason is first up. He is rostered in 37.4% of ESPN leagues and McCaffrey misses week one. He goes out here and he gives you 28 carries, 147 yards, a touchdown, 22.2 PPR points. This is a uh, screenshot from Fantasy Life where they have the utilization report, which is a really, really cool tool. And Mason here was a bell cow, man. 83% of the snaps, 100% of the short down stuff, 100% of the long down and distance, 100% of the two-minute drill, 22.2 PPR points. Any game that Christian McCaffrey is out, this was a tough match versus what was supposed to be a good Jets defense. They didn't show up. They let Jordan Mason run wild on this defensive front. But regardless, any time that McCaffrey misses any sort of playing time, games, whatever, Mason is a locked and loaded top 15 option at the absolute worst. And this also tells us that apparently he slipped up on national television. I feel bad for the kid. He, of course, UDFA from Georgia Tech. He's not media trained. Um, He slips up that he knew this on Friday. Pretty much what happened was is McCaffrey had limited practices all week, and then Friday there was either a setback or he just didn't feel right. So if he knew back on Friday, then week two is truly up in the air. We already have a report from Schefter. Strong possibility that Christian McCaffrey misses week two. We could see Jordan Mason again. So he is the top waiver wire ad, and I will say as well, the way I structure these videos are the top few players I talk through are my priority ads. Priority ads just means I'm using 15% or more of my fab budget on these players are like a high-end waiver wire priority. With Jordan Mason, if you're down bad at running back, I could be talked into all the way up to like 50% plus of my waiver wire budget, probably somewhere in that like 25 to 30% range um, if you're more reasonable and not as RB hungry. I will say if you're curious how many fab dollars I'm spending on each and every single player, I have that over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. Every single week I break down my waiver wire report where I give you all of my waiver options, how much fab I'm spending on each player. Then you also get my weekly rankings and my in-season rest of season rankings over on the Patreon. You can find that in the description and the comment section down below, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. Now, our second player we'll cover here is Isaiah Likely. Of course, still in the priority waiver wire target range here. And if you had Njoku, um, if you had Jake Ferguson, guys who got hurt at tight end, or if you're just looking for tight end in general, um, you should be unloading the clip on Isaiah Likely. He gave the Chiefs defense nine catches, 111 receiving yards, and a touchdown this past week. He had a huge play. He does a Lamar sidestep into the end zone. Really crazy stuff. He is a good player. I think that that, like, that doesn't really need to be said, but he is a good player. And the reason why he started, well, I know people are very apprehensive towards the idea of two tight ends in the same offense, right? They can't both be on the field at the same time. Well, the Ravens have actually told us Yes, they can, which is huge here. If you look at the PFF snap counts, this is from Nathan Jonke over there. He does a great article every single week on the takeaways and the snap counts. We can see here 48 routes run for Zay Flowers, then 45 for Rashad Bateman, and then that wide receiver three spot, Nelson Aguilar, just 16 routes run, where Isaiah likely had 35 routes. So Isaiah likely is actually the wide receiver three on this team, which is crazy. You had Mark Andrews 38 routes, of course, likely on those 35 routes had 12 targets, but if he can hover around, that puts him like right at 70% of the targets, that 35 of 51, which is really good. All you need is like 70% plus to be a startable tight end in the NFL. Him running that many routes has nothing to do with Mark Andrews. There's going to be three top targets in this offense, like most offenses. So Isaiah likely, if he has as much juice as he showed uh, on that first game, and he's going to run this kind of route share, he is an every week tight end one, and in the same tier to me, rest of season, as your Evan Ingram and Joku 
uh, Ferguson tier as a tight end one rest of the way. And if you want to look further at just like 12 personnel, which is just simply two tight end sets with two wide receivers, Pat Thorman showed here uh, the Ravens ran 12 personnel on 53% of their snaps um, on that Thursday night game. And then the Falcons had the highest rate at 42% last year. And that was in a trailing game script where they were down versus the Chiefs. Usually 12 personnel is more of a run-heavy formation. The Ravens are passing out of it because they understand Isaiah Likely is at worst their wide receiver three, and they just want ways to put Likely on the field. And with that knowledge in mind, as long as this sticks and we get 70% plus of the routes for Isaiah Likely, he will be in every week tight end one. I, I would strongly recommend not just like discarding this and being like, well, Andrews will be the one who cares what likely did. This is not just a flash in the pan. This is a good player year three breakout. It is here. He's going to run enough routes for him to be meaningful and an every week starter at tight end. So again, if you're having tight end troubles, see what's going on with Isaiah likely on your waiver wire. Another priority ad here. Who's probably not available on waivers um, in your league. But again, I did under 50% owned. I figured we'd keep it broad for week one. We have Rashid Shahid. He ends up as the wide receiver 15 on the week. He's rostered in 42.1% of ESPN leagues, and he had really good usage. Now, I will say, I doubt this sticks like 26% target, targets per out run versus Olave's 9%. I imagine Shahid will probably settle out in like the high teens, but he's so efficient. He's working downfield. He's like the second best target on this team. He has like some year three breakout candidate in him, right, where this is now his third year. I'd bet against it. I, you guys know I usually like targeting the rookie receivers off of waivers. I'm not huge into these type of guys, but year three breakout candidate, you certainly can talk me into with Shahid. He had a monster game for 16.3 PPR points. He had a deep touchdown. He had targets. He had a high A dot, which is giving him huge efficiency as well. So we'll see if this holds. Uh, I'm optimistic. Again, you know, high teens targets per out run. It's like a fine wide receiver three slash flex play rest of the year. Uh, then we have two more priority waiver wire targets. Uh, our fifth or fourth player here is Jaleel McLaughlin, rostered in 44.2% of ESPN leagues. And what it comes down to is Sean Payton just absolutely loves this guy. Uh, I think he sees him kind of as like his new Darren Sproles. He comes out here and has a better utilization profile than Javante Williams. He had 44% of the rush attempts. He had 33% targets per out run, which is bonkers. He only had 31% of the long down and distance, but the usage was still pretty strong, and he out-touched Javante 15 to 8. Or no, 15 to 9, which is crazy. Um, if he's going to get like 12 to 15 touches every single week, there's going to be better days ahead. He had five catches, so we're talking like valuable touches as well and valuable opportunities as well. Payton sees him as like a, a Darren Sproles clone. He's going to be like a low-end RB3 every week with this kind of usage, which if you follow the channel and you have a hero RB build or a zero RB build, uh, that is very valuable to put in your RB2 spot and just collect. You know, he had 7.8 PPR points this week on what felt like a low-end game for him. Then our fifth players in the priority ad section here is Jeff Wilson and Jalen Wright. This is another one. We had some really weird reporting yesterday where Devon Achan and Raheem Moster both missed practice yesterday. They have a game on Thursday. So that puts both of their statuses for the Thursday game up in the air. We had Jeff Wilson, who actually led the team in rushing with five carries for 26 yards, was a surprise active. Jalen Wright was a surprise inactive. But I will remind you, Achan was a inactive running back for the Dolphins in week one of last year. So I still really like Jalen Wright. I still like Jeff Wilson as well. Both should be rostered and keep an eye on Raheem Mostert and Devon Achan heading into Thursday. Then this takes us into just your normal waiver wire ads. I'm not spending any more than like 10% of my fab budget. I'm not burning a waiver wire priority on these guys, but guys that you should be scooping up off of waivers. We have first up our sixth player today, Bucky Irving. Um, he is available in like 80% of ESPN leagues. Uh, it was a blowout game versus a bad Washington defense, but he did have nine carries for 62 yards. He had two catches for 14 receiving. 11 touches is great. He was efficient on those touches. He had double the amount of rushing yards as Rashad White. Maybe he can work his way into a real role, but he is just a stash for now. Uh, then we have Tank Bigsby here, who led the Jaguars in rushing. 12 carries, 73 rushing yards. He had 12 touches to ETN's 14. People do want to point to ETN's fumble and say, well, ETN fumbled. That's when the Tank Bigsby show started. Uh, Hayden Winks would say otherwise. He has this chart that's really cool that kind of tracks RB usage as the game goes on. And you can see, you know, just what, 10 minutes into the game, Tank Bigsby gets two straight snaps there um, after ETN leads the way. So it was like a healthy dose of both the entire time. Hayden Wing says, by the way, Tank Bigsby was playing early. This wasn't an ETN fumble-induced carry share. This was planned from the jump. So 
We'll see what happens here. Tank Bigsby, if he can get himself to like 10 to 12 touches a game, he is going to be like a low-end RB3, RB4 in a given week, and then also have huge upside if ETN was to go down. Uh, then our eighth player here, Alexander Madison. Um, shocking stuff that he came out here and was actually the receiving back for the Raiders, which is a big deal, right? 22 routes to Zamir White's nine routes, resulting in 35 snaps to Zamir White's 23 snaps. Now, of course, just 11 opportunities to Zamir White's 15 opportunities, but if he's going to be on the field, as the pass-catching running back on a team like the Raiders, who are going to be underdogs in most of their games, that's a pretty fine role to target. And Madison's good enough to between the tackles that he could even earn more carries there as well. So Alexander Madison's actually a very good add-off of waivers, especially in deeper leagues where guys like, you know, McLaughlin, uh, Buck Irving, all of those guys have been drafted already. Uh, then we have Khalil Shakir. He barely makes the cut, so I don't want to cover him too much. I, I assume he's probably... Uh, not available in most of your leagues, um, but he's a fine guy to add, 49.6% rostered. Uh, he had a touchdown. He had a strong week one, but just a 14% target share, but you could sell me on the year three breakout upside, but I would rather play this Buffalo passing game through Keon Coleman, Don Kincaid, and James Cook as well. So close secure is a fine ad, but I'm not going crazy about him, even if he is available in your league. Then we have our rookie wide receiver section of this video, and I say this every single year. Rookie wide receivers are a cheat code in fantasy football. This is a tweet from Jack Miller that I always reference. Rookies increase their points per game as the season goes on. Think about Rashi Rice last year. Thinking about Jaden Reed last year. And veterans don't. They decline. Think about Adam Thielen last year. And that's why I opt for the rookies here over the veterans. And first up, who applies to this is A.D. Mitchell. I would be grabbing him for sure. He is available in over two-thirds of ESPN leagues right now. And we look at the world-famous rookie wide receiver report. A.D. Mitchell, 75% of the routes in week one, but really bad yards per run, really bad first downs per run, really bad PFF grade, but it's just one week of data, and he had a 27.8% targets per out run, which is crazy. That was the third highest on the week. Just couldn't connect with any of them. Had like two touchdowns that Anthony Richardson missed. I think better days are ahead for A.D. Mitchell. He looked good. He got on the field. He got open. It's just the passes didn't connect. So I would stash him now for when the breakout happens in a few weeks. Um, and then I'll also shout out uh, Xavier Leggett here as well as another rookie to make sure you're picking up. Xavier Leggett wasn't a starting receiver here, right? Only 59% of the routes in week one, but he had a 30% targets per out run on a 17.1 yard A dot. So he was targeted downfield. He was targeted often. It's just a matter of finding good quarterback play and getting that 59% route participation up to 75%, 80% in a given week, but he is another really good stash. Now, when we move on to the veterans here. These guys are, you know, short-term plug-in plays, right? If you are a little bit down bad at the flex position, maybe you're out here, um, Odunze gets hurt. Who else kind of gets uh, hurt or bust? Maybe uh, like Christian Watson, you're scared to start because of the Jordan Love situation. Demarcus Robinson, certainly worth a look. He's available in most places. Uh, he didn't get home this week, but he was the wide receiver 16 in volume in terms of expected points per game over on PFF. He had seven targets. And when you look at the Rams routes, he had 47, the second highest behind Cooper Cup. And with Puka Nakua out, Demarcus Robinson is the number two receiver in a good offense. Uh, then we have Brandon Cooks, surprisingly available pretty much everywhere. Again, if there was going to be an Adam Thielen this year, it'd probably be Brandon Cooks. I don't know that he'll be some league winner, but he had seven targets, four catches, 40 yards, and a touchdown. He's like a wide receiver three flex, wide receiver four type of guy that you can throw in there from time to time. Now, I will say, I said 10 players up top. You know, it's a jam-packed week two slate here. Um, but I did want to give some tight end and quarterback options, right? Not every single one of you are going to be able to get Isaiah Likely. Um, so if you can't, I think Colby Parkinson is the next best thing. He was a tight end seven on this week. He ran 80% or more of the routes, which is elite numbers for tight ends. And with no Puka Nakua, Colby Parkinson could be the second or third option on a good passing offense in the Rams. Then we have some quarterbacks. If you had Jordan Love issues, here are some guys to be looking for this week. You have Baker Mayfield. He was the QB2 of the week uh, last weekend. He now gets to go on the road to Detroit, play in their dome, which is usually pretty prone to shootouts. Uh, and then we have Matthew Stafford as well. Uh, he was the QB 13 on this week, which was fine. He actually gets to go on the road versus Arizona in their dome. And they just give up 30-plus points to the Bills this week. So I think that he is also a good option as well. That is going to be our waiver wire video for week two of the fantasy football season. Again, if you're looking for a waiver wire article where I give you my fab recommendations 
every single week along with everything you need in season to win. Check out patreon.com slash Ron Stewart in the description or the comment section down below. But if not, I appreciate you watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next one. Stones, like this froze, ice cold, oh, oh, ice around my body like I'm